showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Channel Pro 5-Minute Roundup. Look at news, trends, and tips for the SMB channel in five minutes or thereabouts. My name is Rich Freeman. I'm executive editor of the Channel Pro Network, also a co-host of this program. I am joined this week, as I am every week, by your other co-host, Eric Simpson, a business transformation and improvement advisor to MSPs and other IT providers. Eric, how goes it? It goes well, Rich. Uh, you know, cruising right through January. I can't believe the first month of 2022 is almost behind us already. It just, it just amazes me how fast uh, things happen uh, at the beginning of a new year. It, it has been kind of a whirlwind, hasn't it? Um, yeah, and you know, we we here at Channel Pro, we've got our first uh, conference of the year coming up right in the uh, the first week of March. And uh, and by golly, that date is approaching quickly. So yeah, time is time is marching by. Yep, waits for no one. Well, let's dive into our top story this week. It comes to us from the folks at ID Agent, a, a subsidiary of Kaseya. Um, they are best known. The, the product that sort of put them on the map in the channel is called Dark Web ID, uh, which is a dark web monitoring service. Um, somewhat after that product came out, they introduced a second product, a security awareness training tool called Bullfish ID. And um, up until today, up until this week, Bullfish ID has been sort of a, a component of the dark web IT product. They came together. They were one system, essentially. Um, and now those two systems have been split apart. You can still get them together if you want to but you can buy either one of them standalone um, as well if you prefer that model. Um, so, you know, a number of different uh, ways that this uh, benefits ID agent partners potentially. For one thing, I was speaking earlier today with an ID agent partner who said the process for signing up a Bullfish ID um, client before if they weren't on dark web ID as well was a little kludgy. It was a little bit awkward. That problem goes away. Um, the two products will have their own release cycle and roadmap now, so maybe you're going to get updates to Bullfish ID a little bit faster than you would before. Um, the de development team can be a little bit more um, solution specific about the interface and the user experience because it's not all part of one tool right now. Um, there's more flexibility, you know, obviously for the MSP in terms of what you acquire. And also because um, if you choose to buy Bullfish ID alone, you're, you're not also getting the dark web uh, ID tool, you will pay less for that system. Um, so I don't have specific pricing to disclose here, but um, it's going to be a lower price than you were paying before for both those systems together. And that will make it um, uh, more affordable, more practical and possible for an MSP to use Bullfish ID, a security awareness training tool as a sales prospecting tool. And that's kind of what's interesting about this news to me, you know, that goes beyond the, the ID agent partner angle on this. Um, the, the dark web ID tool, um, uh, very quickly after it was introduced, uh, MSPs discovered that it is a, a great sales prospecting tool. You know, if you can go into a meeting with a potential customer and show them their password, I found this on the dark web, that gets somebody's attention. But these days, security awareness training is a good way to get a relationship with a new customer started as well, for no other reason that, um, than that a lot of cyber insurance policies require uh, security awareness training. And so uh, some MSPs are finding this is a way to get the door open and then build uh, on top of that. And now there is a much more uh, affordable way to, uh, to uh, do that if you're an ID agent partner. So interesting news for uh, the ID agent channel and, and uh, MSPs who are uh, into those products, Eric, but also just kind of an interesting sign of the times in terms of uh, sales and marketing strategies around security uh, in the SMB channel. Yeah, Rich, it certainly seems like uh, the Bullfish ID baby is growing up. And, and getting its own, you know, its own uh, standalone uh, product and access, reducing costs for partners, which yes, makes it more accessible and easier for them to use that product as well as the dark web ID product in those, uh, you know, pre-sales engagements. And this has been a a core staple, uh, 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 you know, guidance that I give partners that I work with is to use tools like this to prove to clients that they have an issue that they need to deal with early on and not, you know, you're doing, not going to do it for everybody in a company, but you may select a few different uh, individuals that are probably at a higher risk, maybe some folks in the accounting department, uh, elsewhere. Um, and, and it's a great way to, you know, 
you know, show documentation that there is something here that needs to be addressed, you know, and, and takes the emotion out of that conversation and shows prospects that, wow, yeah, I didn't know that. And then you can have the conversation about, well, you know, your staff is your biggest, you know, potential attack vector once we, you know, resolve all the issues with the infrastructure. So we need to address that as well. And it makes it easier to include those services on an ongoing basis in your recurring revenue, uh, cybersecurity uh, bundles. So yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, it's uh, a great opportunity for partners to leverage those at a lower cost now during those early sales engagements. Probably worth mentioning quickly as well, there were some other updates to the Bullfish ID product um, this week in terms of uh, the ability to customize the emails and the training campaigns a little bit um, to create a, a single campaign and roll it out to must multiple clients. Um, there is uh, expanded and customizable reporting functionality, and apparently you can now automate the delivery of those reports to the end users, which I know partners will appreciate not having to get manually involved in that process. So there are, uh, there are some other things going on with the product that are worth checking out. But you know, Eric, security awareness training and a security awareness training tool, that's a, a good way to assess the uh, security smarts of your employee base. But uh, your tip of the week has to do with checking in on something else about the employees. Yes, it does, Rich. And this is, you know, uh, categorize this in the, you know, um, you know, how to, you know, in, in how to reduce churn uh, bucket, right? So in the how to reduce churn category, you know, we've been talking a lot, Rich, uh, about, you know, quote unquote, the great resignation and our partners losing staff to competitors or other uh, companies because they're, you know, just being offered, you know, bonuses and salaries and signing bonuses that, you know, the, the existing MSP isn't prepared to match or, or counter. And so the tip of the week here is all about checking in with your staff, you know, taking the time to sit down with each and every one of them and just have the conversation with them. How are they doing? You know, how do they feel about the direction the organization is going? What are their thoughts for improvement? How do they see themselves in their role? How do they see them growing with the organization? You know, are they thinking about other opportunities? I mean, this is a time to be candid with your staff. It's better to know in advance than to have to react after the fact. And a couple of stories. So I have one uh, partner that I'm working with right now who told me earlier uh, this week that one of their top technicians had been presented an offer at a $10,000 higher salary for one of their competitors to come over. And in this situation, the partner cannot lose this technician. So they have to counter that offer because as we know, it's so hard to find and replace these great resources that we've spent so much time, energy, and effort and money in building up their expertise and value to our organization. So in this case, he's going to have to come up with something better than $10,000. It may even be some sort of a title promotion, maybe some other you know, uh, additional responsibility in the organization, but certainly something that he was not prepared to have to react to at this point. So again, just, and in general, Rich, checking in with your staff and having those, you know, those little coaching and, and mentoring and leadership conversations will probably help avoid being surprised later. Because if you have that relationship with, uh, with your staff and you're, and you're asking them these types of questions, chances are that, you know, they'll let you know, hey, you know, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting hammered by these headhunters. You know, I mean, I've had staff tell me in my MSP when that was happening, you know, and I'd say, well, you know, um, you know, what did they say? You know, what, what are you thinking? Um, you know, how can, you know, how can we do things differently so you don't have to worry about being annoyed by a bunch of headhunters, you know, hitting on you, you know. Uh, so, but back then it was different, right? It wasn't the situation that we're in now, which is, I think, unheralded you know, in my experience in the IT industry of, of the whole, you know, great resignation and, and the salaries and comp that, uh, that these technicians and engineers are now commanding because of the situation and, you know, taking advantage of. 
you know, I, I haven't seen the latest figures in a little while, but I do remember seeing some numbers from CompTIA late last year indicating that the unemployment rate um, in IT uh, is at the lowest it's been in many years, if not ever, basically at this point. So, I mean, it's always a good idea to make sure that the people on your team you appreciate know that they're appreciated, but it's especially important um, right now. And um, and I really kind of like the, the idea, Eric, that you should kind of just be open um, with the employees about the fact that you're assuming they're, they're you know, potentially being approached by other employers and you sort of understand that's the kind of thing that, uh, um, you know, can happen, but that you, you're you very interested in keeping them on board. I mean, basically sort of setting the expectation that if they are tempted to leave, they should come to you first and see if there's something that uh, that you can do that uh, that would make sticking around that much more appealing to them. Yeah, and that's the relationship you really want to have with your staff. You want to have that trust uh, and openness. And you know, I have been in situations, Rich. You know, where where some staff take advantage and play both sides against each other, and then it becomes you know, it leaves it leaves kind of a bitter taste in your mouth when you see that kind of thing going on. But generally, you know, if, if you know, the team would rather stay with the family that they're with, um, you know, unless there is some compelling reason that just forces them to exit. So getting in front of it early is the guidance here. All right, totally agreed. Uh, leaves us with time for just one more story this week. And, uh, it, uh, it, it might have some echoes to fans of the movie Weekend at Bernie's. We can call this Irish Weekend at Bernie's or something like that. Um, last week, it appears, according to the Irish Times, uh, a man who appeared to be in his 60s was dragged into a post office in the town of Carlo uh, by two younger men who basically uh, wanted to collect his pension. Um, when questioned by staff, the two men fled, leaving behind the older man who was dead. Uh, so basically, I, I don't know where they found this guy. They basically thought this might be an opportunity to cash in on, uh, on Bernie. Um, but uh, they were, the, the, the plot was foiled. At least it didn't succeed. I have no idea based on the story whether or not the perpetrators have been caught. But uh, who knew, who knew that we Weekend at Bernie's might someday be a documentary, Eric? Yeah, yeah. Evil Irish weekend at Bernie's. That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to leave you with that on that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us this week on the Five Minute Roundup. We're going to be back again next week with another episode for you. Um, we are both a video and a podcast. So if you're watching the video, but you're into podcasts, check us out anywhere you get podcasts, um, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, Apple, etc., uh, if you do, please uh, take the time to rate and review. It makes the show easier for other people to find. If you are listening to the podcast now, you're curious about the video, we are on YouTube. Uh, easiest way to find us is on the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube. Um, and uh, if you click the little bell icon there, we will even notify you when new episodes of this program become available. Um, you can read more about uh, Bullfish ID and uh, the, uh, the latest news from ID Agent and other vendors. Get all sorts of great uh, advice on growing your business by visiting channelpronetwork.com every day because there is great new content for you going live there every day. To learn more about Eric and the work he does with his clients, please visit ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K Simpson.com. So once again, folks, we thank you very much for joining us. It's all the time we've got this week, but uh, please, until next time, enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. already.